Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today, we are going to be talking about server naming convention. How should you be structuring the name of a server in a business? So my name is Emilio and today we're talking about servers and what the name of the servers should be. Now, if you're watching this, you probably work in the IT industry and perhaps you are involved in server management, in server administration uh, in some form or another. And you wanna know how should I be naming my servers? Um, you may come from a place that names your servers terribly server 01, server 02, server 03. Uh, and, then, and then down the track you go, well, what's server 02? I've got no idea. What's server 03? I've got no idea. Unless you've got that documented somewhere, unless you have some sort of an asset register to be able to tell you what that, what that, you know, what that server is, it really doesn't give you much information just from the name. Wouldn't it be wonderful if just from the name of the server, you can find out a lot of information just from the name? Wouldn't it be wonderful if just from the server name, you could find out a whole bunch of information about that server. You may be able to know exactly where the server is located, what sort of server it is, and what sequence of number it is, just from the server name. So you, you don't have to necessarily go and look up a asset register to find out about the server because it's already built into the name of the server itself. Now, before we even get started with the server name, you wanna make sure that it is a total uh, it's a generally a good practice to be a total length of 16 characters. Don't make the server name any longer than 16 characters. As a good practice, the server name at the very start should always contain the business name or at least an abbreviation, well, ideally an abbreviation of the business name. Now you may be saying, well, look, I've only got one business. You know, I've only got business ABC, fruits, um, I'm never gonna have that name again, right? What if in the future that business gets acquired? What if in the future you've grown and you've acquired a new business? What if you don't have the business name in there and then you've got another business that you're now dealing doing business with that have got the same sort of name? You know, they've got server 01 and that's it. And they've got another server 01 and then you think, oh no, what am I supposed to do? Well, what if you had the name ABC server 01 and they had DEF server 01 Bam, they're together. You now know that ABC was from business ABC and DEF was from business DEF. So have the, um, the business name in there. So the business name could be a combination of two characters or three characters, depending on how you want to abbreviate it. But again, keeping in mind that if you want to keep to the 16 character limit, just form your, your structure around that, perhaps in groups of three, perhaps in groups of two. I preference generally groups of three. So if you've got a business called ABC Fruits, I'll use the name ABC as the very start three characters of my server name. The next part of my server name is the location or the site. If you have multiple sites, perhaps in different suburbs, in different regions, in different areas, in different states, in different cities, uh, in different countries, whatever it may be, incorporate that bit into the name. So let's say, for example, I am, I am in Australia, so I am in Melbourne. Um, you've got Sydney, you've got Brisbane. So my abbreviation would be M-E-L for Melbourne, S-Y-D for Sydney, or B-R-I for Brisbane. So I would have a name of ABC M-E-L. So I straight away know from the name, it's company ABC in Melbourne, in M-E-L. So that's really the first bit. That is the information about the company. Right, so it's the company and the location of the particular office or where the particular server is residing. If the server resides in the cloud, you may want to have it as AWS or A as you know A Z A Z U for Azure. You may want to be able to change that, but generally try to have it as a location of the actual server, company name and location. We then move into the distinctives of the server itself. Uh, what sort of server is it? Is it a production server? Is it a development server? Is it a file server? Uh, if there's more than one file server, what do I do? The next three characters really is the environment of the server. What sort of tier it's part of. Now generally, in most IT spaces, there is what's called a four tier model. 
So a server would generally fall into one of these four tiers. It would fall under a development stage, right? A DEV -E for development. Could fall under a test stage, TST for test. Could fall under staging, STG. Or will fall under production, PRD. So depending on where that server lives, you'll put it into a particular tier, into a particular phase. So again, if it's a staging server, I'm gonna say A, B, C, M, E, L, S, T, G. So straight away, I know in the server that it's from company A, B, C, it's based in Melbourne, and it's a staging server. All right, it's not a production server, which means I could potentially power this server down. I could change the server without too much complications. If I see PRD in the name, I know straight away that it, that, that is a production server, and I, and, I, you know, and I need to be more cautious of what I'm gonna be doing with that server. We then move into the function of the server. So we now know that it's in a particular tier, in a particular phase, production, staging, dev, or test. Now, what does the server do? Is it an application server? Is it a domain controller? Is it a web server? Is it a database server? Whatever it may be, put that into the name. So if it's a database server, you may wanna do DB. If it's a domain controller, DC for domain controller or AD for Active Directory. If it's a file server, you may wanna be calling it, you know, FL or FS, file server or FL for file, you know, something like that. If it's a, what's another example? An application server, if it's hosting some applications, it could be a double P. Um, if you still have characters available and you wanna be more specific, you can actually maybe give the name of the application. You know, let's say it's APPOF, if it's application of office or APPEX, application exchange. Um, the name, could, the type could be mail, M-E-M-A-I-L. So the function could be very varied depending on what the function of the server is. You don't have to be that specific on this, specifically saying that it's just DB. You may want to be able to give it a bit more information. Again, keeping under that 16 character limit. You could be calling it DB, um, I don't know, DBEX, because it's the exchange database server. Something around those lines, but making sure that the function of the server is listed in there. And then finally, the number or the sequence. So in many organizations, you'll have more than one of the same type of server. If you have a file server and you're calling it FS, what if you have three or four of these FS servers? It may be a bit complicated to just have FS and then what are you gonna call the next one? So good practice to have FS01 and the next one will be FS02, 03, 04 and onwards. The same deal, DB01, DB02. So good practice, always have a number at the end of your server name. Do not keep that blank. Have DB01, 02, 03, 04 as your sequence. So there you have it. That is my general recommendations around a server naming convention. To summarize, we're really talking about, firstly, the company name, the customer name, whatever it may be, which could be two or three characters, followed by the location or the site where it's actually physically located in a state, in a city, in a location, in an office, whatever it may be. You then may want to spit into there, uh, potentially in the in that space as well, you could make, you know have the, um, the, the location. If you have a very large office or if you have multi-levels, you know, you would have in there, you know, let's say if it's MEL uh, one, may, maybe means it's the Melbourne office on level one or MEL N, maybe it's the Melbourne office in the north side or in the south side or in the west side. You can actually abbreviate that a little bit more if you need to. Then it's followed by the environment. So whether if it's in production, in staging, development or in the test phase, followed by the function, whether it's a database server, a domain controller, a file server, an application server, and then the sequence number of 0102 onwards. That is my summary. I hope you found it helpful. I'd love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have a different naming convention for your servers in your organization. And subscribe to Digital by Computing and like this video as well for a whole bunch of more videos around technology and all of the cool things in IT. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.